we knew that place at a hot spot where which we catch fishes we called some of the place Oma Oko, a hot spot for fishing Oma Oko. even any boy Oma Ago, a hot spot for farming farmland Oma Oko, a hot spot for fishing in a job was and the major moko they corrupted the language from all moko to all moko the other people the chair in query hello wonderful people i remain your own faithfully chukwemeka mm. the unifier it was now proponent i have landed a very big fish on this namen tv show here with me is a very, very, very asset to the Igbo nation. He is a traditionalist and very vast in the Igbo history. Amen. Mazi, Amen. You have the floor to introduce yourself pro properly to our guests. Okay, um, viewers all over the world, I am Stay Mazi Dibia, the teaching magnet the custodian of the Arufonye deity in Anando, Mombala region, Akamunata Obobili, of the ancient uh, Idueri kingdom, uh, the last child of Iguedo, the progenitor, uh, whose husband was Iru. Uh, I am from the Anandu Idujuni Uru, in Akamunata Obobili, Mombala region of Anambra state, present the Anambra state. Um, um, it's a pleasure for me to be in your forum, and uh, I Thank hope you. that any few comments I'll make, because we don't have much time, exactly. will uh, influence the audience to begin to research. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm. Um, you've heard from the horse's mouth. Uh, <laughs> well, I promise you a, a, a show that is packed with knowledge in history. Mm. Mazi, mm. you are knowledgeable when it comes to history and migrations uh, let me assume that uh, my reincarnator is an ancient being that have lived on the face of the earth uh, from tiny memoria they have deposited their traces and the proof in our dna which we can uh, resonate in our consciousness if we are using our pioneer gland so uh, most of the histories i know is not written i do say this you can't find it on books but by virtue of the consciousness of my vibration coming from my pioneer gland, I can tell you many history that will shock you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, to the Igbo identity crisis. Okay. Uh, the Igbo nation have an still currently suffering this uh, identity crisis, mm. especially with our brothers, people that speaks the Igbo language pure in its form with their own dialects. We are talking about the Igbos of the Anyoma region mm. and also the Igbos in the rivers, uh, talking about the Ikwere, the Eche people, the Oba, the Ekbeye, the Omoko. Yes, that is the Obas. Mm. What do you have to tell us about this? And um, uh, just share with us your knowledge. Uh, if you ask me um, to destroy an empire, the greatest tool you can use is damage their history. If you corrupt the history of a people, then you can displace them. When you've displaced them, you've dispersed them. When you've dispersed them, they begin to see that which is, is indigenous to them, as though it's an alien knowledge. But the difference between education and knowledge is that education can be filled with lies. But knowledge breaks protocols of propinquity to dig out the actual truth in fact and figures. Um, as for the people you mentioned, um, we are just a product of misunderstanding, misunderstanding, and misunderstanding. And I will explain. It is madness to presume that the current Igbo race uh, 500 years ago was called Igbos. No. We are originally called Ndibo, ancient people. And we have subclans. From the family, we have kinsmen, kindred, clan, okay, village, you know, depending on the kind of uh, uh, jurisdictions you want to give it. But we are 
noted by our clans we are subgroups and we are always migrating we don't stay at a place we are merchants we are intellectuals we are diviners we are nation builders we contributed to one of the oldest civilization on earth including sumeria and egypt including in the days of Ethiopia, the glory days of ethiopia um even in the days of emperor ganges the Igbos, we are in ethiopia okay now the people you mentioned for me are all Igbos. But the problem is this, Igbo clans are not termed Igbos. The word Igbo started in New Year's when the white men begin to infringe the classification of a people by virtue of their language. We have the Bantu classification, the Kwa language, blah, blah, blah. To make us look minute and pinchomic as a little people, they begin to call us tribes instead of nation. The Igbo is beyond the tribe. The word tribe is like a derogatory of the actual word. We are a nation. The Igbo nation is indigenous to this place, but have traces of their existence, their migration, and their contribution to civilization in the tentacles of the world. Now, by virtue of that, we were not originally termed as Igbos. We were named by virtue of our clans. Ndinri. Ndibuku, Ndagolo, Umudioka, from the man Oka. This Oka is still the same progenitor of this Oka you are hearing. Okuzu, Iguedo, Edo, Aguku, all this is the Nri clan, the North, yeah? We are named by our clans. They see the Nri, the Nri dynasty. Dieri, you hear Aguluri, Umuluri, Anando. The Omombala is the bigger clan, ranging to the Ataglafu Empire, the ancient Kwararafa Empire that emanated from our own brother Egala. Okay? Egala. Yes, but the problem is when the white man came to our land, they begin to say, okay, how do we penetrate these people? Okay, we, by studying us, they don't understand our language. So some of the things they came with, seeing the way we lived our life, was beyond their understanding. They really understood us, but they did, they did not understand us. So they understood us by virtue of our language. So they believe that is by the understanding of the language, they can call all of us Igbos, not knowing there are dialect disparities even though we are Igbos. I'll give you an example. If someone from Ebony is speaking Eza, Izi, Afi Igbo, Nara, is that the same Igbo dialect with Ohofia? No. Anambra? No. Imo? No. But it's all Igbo. Yes. By virtue of migration, trade, we begin to be influenced by those who are living close to our boundary. With respect to what we did with the Ogisos, who happens to be one of our... That would be a story for another day. We begin to influence their language. They begin to influence our language because we are from one family clan. Now, the problem now becomes when you move far north, your language tilts. When you move far east, your language concentrates. When you move far west, your language tilts. When you move far south, your language tilts. So... Depending on the paradigm of your migration, your language varies. But the central language is the Igbo language. The language of the Bo people, the ancient Ndibo, ancient language. Even in the ancient Congo Empire, the Bakongo Empire, we have been existent. Now, why am I saying? Be careful of the coastal areas. Because the oldest means of transportation was water. One of the oldest means of transportation is water. Now, they came through the water channel, discovered our people. But they have a concentration of their illness. They wanted to disrupt our people's unity. 
they brought a propaganda to divide and conquer. Now, someone from Iguacha, present day Potakot. I, learned, I hate to use that name, Potakot, because that man is a pedophile. Go and read the history of Mr. Harcourt. You never name that place, Port Harcourt. Now, present day Iguacha, they saw our people, the concentration of our people. We knew that place at a hot spot where which we catch fishes. We called some of the place Oma Oko, a hot spot for fishing. Oma Oko. Even any boy, Oma Ago, a hot spot for farming, farmland. Oma Oko, a hot spot for fishing in a joke was. And the major Omoko. They corrupted the language from Omoko to Omoko. The Oba people. The Eche in Quere. Then they concentrated some slave camps there. Capturing people from different parts of the world. Confining them in a space. By struggling to identify each other. They created a new language which have lasted up to 100 years. The Igbo people have a saying. When I'm abnormal lasts for a century. It becomes a norm. So the ill language they corrupted us is now the language the children are speaking. Presuming that that was the ancient language, slavery played a part in giving multilingual languages. But if you look at the base of each language, you will see Igbo, the ancient Igbo language in it. So are you saying that the Ikwere language was a corruption? Ikwere language is a dialectical corruption of Igbo language. When I use the word corruption, it doesn't really mean it's a derogatory statement. Like I said, if you move far south, the language tilts. tilts. Influenced by the people in your border. Influenced by war. When the Portuguese encamped the ancient Igbo kingdom, 